Hello, ladies, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Roden, and in today's video, we're going to be going over the top 15 most unpopular cars that I love for less than $5,000. No, I am not at a girl's slumber party right now. I'm actually in my little sister's room, so that's why I have all these girly background images. I always mention that whenever, whenever I'm recording in her room, which actually happens more often than I would like it to. I don't know why I always record in here, but I do. It always just ends up happening. Um, but yeah, I just like mentioning it because I don't want people to think that I have like teal curtains in my room. I don't, I don't want that to happen. So yeah, these are just cars that I personally think are a little bit like slept on or underrated or just unpopular in general for less than $5,000. Okay. All right. Now you can obviously argue that some of these cars aren't unpopular, that they're, that they're actually too popular. You could even argue the complete opposite and say that they're overrated or something like that. That's, that's up to you, man. This is just my opinion on what cars I believe are unpopular choices for the price. Like I, I personally don't see a lot of people talking about these cars when talking about buying a car for less than 5k as a car guy. Without further ado, let's get right into it with number 15. And that goes to the old Dodge Neon SXT. The SXT Neon is not as good as the SRT4 Neon. I'm not going to sit here and stroke your Johnson on that one. No, it's not. Okay. It's definitely a little bit worse, but it's still a good car. Okay. It's still a good car. It comes with a two liter inline four, making 132 horsepower going to the front wheels, which is obviously a low horsepower number, but these cars weigh only 100 pounds more than an NA Miata. Back when these things came out, these were like the autocross car. Like people were autocrossing SXT Neons all the time because they're just so lightweight. And I know it has a PT Cruiser motor under the hood, but that PT Cruiser motor is actually not as bad as people give it credit for when it when it is in a such a small car. If it's obviously, obviously if this thing when it was in the PT Cruiser wasn't the best, but when it was in a Neon, it's not that bad. Coming in at 14th is one that's definitely getting more praise lately, but I still do believe it is unpopular for what it, from what it should be. It is the Mitsubishi 3000 GT. Yes, yes, it's very popular sometimes i get it people are starting to talk about it more people are starting to like this car but i still think that it has ways to go before it's at its at where it should be they come with a three liter v6 making 170 horsepower in their front wheel drive are they fast no they're heavier cars only making 170 horsepower the v6 can't make that much power it's front wheel drive i know they're not the best car out there in terms of performance but that's why it's here at the number 14 spot but it does look incredible. I think it's one of the better looking cars on this list for sure. As a matter of fact, I would maybe even say it is the best looking car on this list. I can't quite say that yet though, because there are some others that, that are pretty good. 13th place, Friday the 13th, Jason has a machete up to my throat right now. It's the Nissan Xterra. Such a cool name, such an interesting car. I feel like the name implies that this thing is used to hunt dinosaurs, but at the same time, it has never done that before because dinosaurs have been way too extinct when this thing came out. The car comes with a four liter V6, making 261 horsepower in its four x four, obviously. A four liter V6 made by Nissan is definitely questionable, but they have had good track records in the past with VQs and stuff like that. So if this is something around along those lines, then it would probably be reliable as hell. And on top of that, I feel like most people just talk about Jeeps and they talk about maybe like Forerunners or Highlanders or, or, or Pathfinders or that's RAV4s, I don't know, CRVs, but they never talk about the Xterra and that's a crime. 12th place, 12th place, 12th place. It, it, it is admittedly a car that does make sense why not too many people talk about it. It is the Mazda RX-8. The reason why nobody really talks about this in case you guys don't know is it's unreliable. It's a ticking time bomb. This thing, you might as well just be driving a, a, a wagon around. And then on top of that, actually with the wagon, loosen up the bolts on the wheels so that there's a chance that they fall off. Then you get the reliability of an RX-8. They come with a 1.3 liter two rotor rotary engine making 212 horsepower and they are rear wheel drive. They're a super far, super far. They're a super fun car when they run, but they don't run a lot. Uh, so that's why they're sitting at the under, under 5K all the time. I still think that they, uh, you know, they do need a little bit more love. I just think more people need to understand what they're getting themselves into before going and buying an RX-8. My GoPro just like did the Millie Rock for some reason. I don't, I don't know what that was all about. But either way, coming in at number 11 is the Chevy Corvette C4. And no, I am not talking about the high grade explosives used in military training. I am talking about the fourth generation of the Chevrolet Corvette it's muscle car, muscle car. Would you call it, would you guys consider a, mus a Corvette a muscle car or a sports car? I personally would consider it a sports car. Either way, the C4, comes with a 5.7 liter V8, making 220 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. I wanna make very clear, really quick. Yes, it makes 220 horsepower, but that's only in certain years. Every year of the C4 Corvette is different, so you have to make sure you know what you're getting before you buy it. And the reason why these cars are unpopular is quite simple, really. They are a very underpowered Corvette. They are a very 
unfortunately slow in a straight line Corvette, but they are the, like one of the lightest Corvettes though, so they're really good at handling. 10th place suffers the same fate as our old friend the RX-8 because it is the Mini Cooper S R53. These things are just unreliable and that's the reason why nobody talks about them. But on the same side of that, I still think even if these things were, were reliable cars, people still want to talk about them just because they're Mini Coopers and I think that's a crime. They come with a 1.6 liter supercharged inline three weird motor i know making 170 horsepower in their front wheel drive also i don't know why i said inline three i actually don't think that's right i think i wrote that down in my notes and was just horribly incorrect i don't know why i wrote that i'm pretty sure these come with an inline four scratch that they definitely come with an inline four i don't know what i'm saying uh but yeah they're little they're little autocross monsters are they unreliable again yeah they're a british car they're gonna blow up but who cares it's a fun little car while it lasts dude these things are oh, they're probably such a blast to drive Ninth position is going to the wonderful Lexus IS250. The IS250, first generation, by the way, because no, you're not, your chances are you're not finding a IS250 second or third generation for less than 5K. You're definitely not finding a freaking third generation for less than 5K. So the second generation or first, it's like, it's the second generation IS, but first generation IS250. They come with a 2.5 liter V6, making 204 horsepower, and they are rear wheel drive. Super fun little Lexuses. Everybody thinks that the IS300, the first generation IS, is the only Lexus IS that's a cool car to drive. Like, no, these things are fun too. They're still cool cars. Are they as cool as a, a 2JZ powered Lexus IS? Probably not, but they're still cool cars, man. Eighth place is going to a weird one. It's the Hyundai Tiburon GT. Okay, hear me out. Again, I know why people don't really like this car. I know why it's unpopular. But at the same time, I can't help but like it sometimes, man. I just can't. It just takes me back to Need for Speed Underground. Like, it's just such a Need for Speed Underground car. They come with a 2.7 liter V6, making 172 horsepower, and they are front wheel drive. They are obviously kind of slush boxes, man. They're not that fast. They're not that great at handling. They're relatively heavy, actually. Uh, they can't make that much power, and they're not the most reliable car. I know why people don't like these cars, man. I get it. They're, they're really just, there's just so many better options for the price that you're paying for a Tiburon. But at the same time, man it's kind of cool and it's just like a 2000s tuner car that you can actually still buy for less than 5k and i love that seventh place is going to another one that does kind of make sense the nissan 300 zx z31 the reason why nobody likes this car nobody talks about this car is because the z32 is quite literally just better than this car in every single way there's actually zero reason to buy a z31 over a z32 except for the fact that you might like the looks of the z31 better that's pretty much it or if you don't have the money to afford a z32 so you buy a z31 they come with the same motor a three liter v6 making 222 horsepower and they are rear wheel drive just like the z32s so that that part of it's obviously cool but they have a really cramped engine bay they have a notorious reputation for being insanely hard to work on the z32 isn't much better but it's at least slightly better than the z31 in that sense and on top of all that this car was just not it in terms of its performance it just it was just too bulky too weird it had too soft of suspension and its interior was just weird looking for the for the time sixth place sixth place is going to the nissan sentra ser B15. Yes, you can find an SCR Sentra for less than 5k. I know it blew my mind when I saw it too. I was like, dude, I always thought that these cars were going to turn into like JDM legends because they're kind of freaking sick, man. They come with a two liter inline four making 145 horsepower going to the front wheels. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I probably am wrong here, but isn't that an SR20 DE? Not a DAT. I'm not saying it's a DET. I know it's not a DAT, but isn't it an SR20 DE? If it is, that's freaking cool i get that it's not as cool obviously as having a turbo sr20 debt but it's still that's still freaking that's a, that's baller man that's baller and they look cool i like the looks of these b15 centras i like them a lot centras are one of like the most underrated freaking uh J jdm cars of the 2000s in my opinion Coming out of fifth place, though, breaking its way into the top five is the wonderful BMW Z3. Yes, the Z3, the GOAT. That's why he's the GOAT. The GOAT is a beast. I love it. I love everything about the Z3. It's I love BMWs already, and I like like small cars that handle well. And when they combine those two, you know gosh darn well Mark is going to like that car. It comes with a 3-liter inline 6, making 225 horsepower, and it is rear-wheel drive. Obviously, this is slightly a popular car. People do talk about these cars. But when I say they're unpopular, I mean like in the sense of BMWs. Like people talk about the E46, E36, 
E90 more than the Z3 by a long shot. And maybe that's just because three series are the most popular BMWs, but this is literally just, in my opinion, if you're buying a sports car, at least it's a better ver a better option than an E46 in every way. It's the same car, but just way more sporty. If you're obviously for buying something that's going to be used as a daily, then yeah, you might not want to go with the Z3. But if you're just buying like a sports car, track car thing, this is, in my opinion, a miles better option than the E46. Fourth place, on the other hand, is kind of the absolute complete opposite of that car. It's an American big old boat that's as long as my wiener. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Obviously, it's slightly shorter. It's the Pontiac Firebird generation. Listen, the fourth gen Camaros, everybody doesn't like them. The catfish Camaros are like, oh, they're so ugly. They start throwing up when they look at them. I think they're being a little bit dramatic. I don't throw up when I see them, but they are definitely not the best looking cars. The fourth gen Firebird is the exact same thing, except now it looks cool. Comes with a 5.7 liter V8, making 310 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. That's a freaking lot of horsepower, dude. Like, that's, that's, that's a good... That's good horsepower. Now, obviously, the fire for fourth fourth generation Firebird that you're going to be able to afford for under 5K may not be able to be the V8 with 310 horsepower. It might be a little bit less than that, but it'll still be a fun rear wheel drive muscle car, man. Third place is literally only on this list because people think that they're boring because they don't look that flashy or special or anything. The Infiniti G35 sedan. It is quite literally the exact same car as the coupe, except it has four doors. And people don't talk about them at all because they don't look as cool as the coupe, which I'll admit is true. I do think the coupe looks way better than the sedan does, but they're the same car. They come with a 3.5 liter V6, making 286 horsepower, and they are rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. This is also a cool option that you have the all-wheel drive option on the sedan, so you don't have that option with the coupes. Um, and everybody's going to be like, oh, it's the same thing as a 350Z as well. Yeah, pretty much. It's a four-door 350Z. Obviously, it isn't as like sportly tuned as a 350Z is because it's... It's not a sports car, but it is relatively the same. It's a it's a it's 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 a really good option for under 5k, man. And maybe that's just my VQ fanboy coming out of me, but like I don't know. It's a good car. Second position is so slept on again because of the looks. It is a Honda Civic seventh generation. The seventh gen Civic just didn't do it for most people in terms of the looks. They don't really like how these things are, are, are well look um, and i understand where they're coming from they also didn't come with the best motors of the honda lineup but it doesn't need to be a best motor of the honda lineup it just needs to be a honda motor and it is a good motor al already they come with a 1.7 liter inline four making 127 horsepower and they are front wheel drive obviously again horsepower number there is low but it's also kind of irrelevant when talking about hondas We're talking about base horsepower because let's be freaking honest here there is not a soul under the sun that is going to keep their honda bone stock Okay, besides me, because my Integra is still stock. Well, it's not even stock. It has a full exhaust on it. So, like, I, I didn't do that, but still, it has an exhaust on it. So, like, yeah, it has 127 horsepower, but that number can very easily go up. On top of that, if you don't like the motor, if the motor is too un, un, unassuming, or not unassuming, but un, uninteresting, I guess. Yeah, whatever. We'll go with that. Uninteresting for you. Uh, then, under underachieving that's the word i was looking for underachieving for you then you could easily swap it out with something like a b series or a k series for really cheap honorable mention because my buddy has one of these and i really wanted to mention it because i actually ever since he bought it i actually kind of started falling in love with them a little bit the nissan altima coupe uh there's not any other generations of the altima that gave you a coupe option so it is the altima coupe there's only one altima coupe out there it comes with a 3.5 liter v6 making 270 horsepower in its front wheel drive yes that is a vq yes it's a vq that's going to the front wheels it's kind of weird combo there uh, it is a detuned VQ as well, so it's not as fast as 350Zs or G35s are, but it's actually a really, really cool car. I think it's really underrated. But first place, in my opinion, the best freaking underappreciated $5,000 car is the Hyundai Genesis Coupe right now. I cannot believe that these things are even under 5k. I think people are sleeping on these so hard. They come with a 3.8 liter V6 making 290 horsepower and they are rear wheel drive. That is the BK1, the which is the only one you're going to be able to find under 5k. You could also find a 2.0 turbo, which only has around 210 horsepower. There's kind of a difference there. The V6 has the power up front. So if you don't plan on modifying the engine a lot and you just want to keep it relatively stock and have fun right out of the gate, then get the v6 but it doesn't have that much tuning potential so keep that in mind if you want to tune the car and have more potential then get the 2.0 turbo it's the better option for that either way they are relatively both going to be not that great in terms of tuning potential they're both not the best tuners out there which is i think the reason why people don't talk about them that much but not everybody needs 500 600 horsepower in their cars if you just want a fun little daily that can just slide around in parking lots when you want to this is an incredible option man
But ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of today's video of the top 15 most unpopular sports cars or just cars in general, because a lot of these are not sports cars. I would not consider a G35 sedan, Civic 7th generation or Neon SXT or Xterra or uh, IS250 or even the Tiburon GT. I wouldn't consider a lot of these cars sports cars, so scratch the sports cars thing. But yeah, the 15 most unpopular cars for less than $5,000 in my opinion. These are these are them. Obviously, there are probably some that I'm forgetting. I don't know every car under the sun. So leave the comments down below of cars that you think are underrated for less than 5K. And it, that might help me in the future because I make a lot of obviously cheap car videos. And if you guys leave cars that like you think should be recommended on this channel, maybe in the future I'll use them. Who knows? Who knows? I know. And you want to know what the answer is? Yes, I will. I will use them. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Das Badania, and have a nice night. <laughs>